After the VRAM panic of early 2023, it seemed to like the practical value of 4GB graphics cards sank overnight. With the level of optimization on display in today's games, who'd even think of buying a 4GB graphics card? Well, I mean, you, possibly, if you're here because you wanted to see how the 1650 Super's doing. Doomsayers, including yours truly, have said anything below 8GB is going to be limited to older games from now on. Time to see if I was wrong. Unlike its little brothers, the GTX 1650 Super has now vanished from the new market. Officially or not, this card is now effectively discontinued by Nvidia, only available on second-hand sites like eBay. And that means it's now in my territory. I review older, used GPUs to see if they still have a place in modern gaming. So you can tell if you should invest in one if you find a good deal, or hold on to one if you are contemplating an upgrade. The intro to this video contains some clues to the answer already. The world of games has changed and 4GB cards are struggling to find their place. That means there may be some real bargains to be had on cards like the 1650 Super, which until recently had a pretty good reputation. I used one for a few months when I was waiting for the RTX 30 series to launch and it was better than I expected. That being said, I have a fairly fixed benchmark roster in this series, and most of the games I test are less than two years old. I'm not going to go easy on the 1650 Super just because I used to own one, but I'm also not going to call it trash if it can't play at Ultra. Compared to more modern budget cards like the RX 6500 XT from AMD and the ARC A380 from Intel, the 1650 Super is refreshingly free from corner cutting. Yes, it's only PCIe Gen 3, but it has a fully wired X16 slot, meaning Gen 4 owners get the same bandwidth as an X8 card, and Gen 3 and especially Gen 2 systems don't need to worry about a bottleneck. It has a 128-bit memory bus, unlike the 64 and 96-bit buses on the newer cards, and unlike the ARC A380, GeForces are less dependent on resizable bar for performance and can run DX10 and 11 titles without emulation. That latter point won't matter a whole lot in this video, but if you need a GPU for GTA 5 or Counter-Strike 2 for example, that's a big point in favour of the 1650 Super. It might seem like I've been giving mostly backhanded compliments to the 1650 Super so far, and it's true, based on my recent experience, I've assumed that this card is going to be held back by its limited VRAM. Of course, that is just an assumption, and the only way we're going to find out for sure is... Thanks to a few patches shortly after launch, The Last of Us has been able to shed some of its reputation for unrealistic VRAM demands, but that doesn't mean it's suddenly super optimised. The default settings would actually turn out to be erring on the side of caution. It chose low settings with FSR quality, and that managed to run just over 60 FPS. For the sake of comparison with other, similar GPUs, I pushed up to medium and disabled FSR, which came in a hair under 40 FPS, beating the RX 580 by 10% and the 6GB GTX 1060 by 20%. It is, however, exceeding the VRAM limit, according to the menu, so there's a strong chance you'll experience drops or stutters in heavier scenes. Resident Evil 4 Remake actually performs very well, but once more isn't very tolerant of 4GB cards. Again, in an attempt to match settings with some similar cards I've tested recently, I chose the prioritised graphics preset with textures dropped to 0.5GB which still gave a red warning but was technically below 4 gigs. The game managed to run most of the benchmark at over 40 FPS on average, before crashing to desktop. Even if it hadn't, it would still have come in a few frames behind the 1060 and even further behind the 580. Going with the balanced preset saw performance that exceeded the 1060 and matched the 580, reaching 65 FPS on average and over 50 FPS at minimum, though only after turning textures down to a quarter of a gigabyte. In Jedi Survivor, the 1650 Super once more bests the 6GB GTX 1060, Though we're kinda talking semantics, the average FPS at 1080 medium is 32, about 10% above the 1060, while 1% 1 lows only reach 21, still faster than the old Pascal card, 
but pretty painful to behold. Dropping to the low preset didn't look as bad as I'd feared and helped stabilise the frame rate slightly, but still falls a hair short of a locked 30fps experience. The story's pretty similar in Ratchet & Clank at 1080p medium settings, though most of the poor performance is front-loaded into the beginning of the test. By the end of the tutorial section, averages hit 46, and lows are about a frame below 30fps. I had thought that Starfield might not give too much trouble, as it's generally less harsh on the VRAM than other 2023 games, but that wasn't the case. The test scene averaged a little under 30 FPS with lows of 25, and outdoors in New Atlantis that takes a hit of about 10%, and this wasn't surprising as the game does have a bit of an AMD bias, however I couldn't help but notice some textures are failing to fully stream in so maybe 4GB cards aren't enough even here. As always, Forza Horizon 5 is a ray of sunshine in 2023. In fact, it's curious, I'm surprised at how well it performed. At 1080 high, it scored over 80 FPS in the CAN benchmark, over 20% faster than the RX 580 and the 1066GB at the same preset, and over 30% faster than the vanilla 1650. That being said, despite all this horsepower, there isn't enough room to turn up to Ultra. Averages plummeted below 40, lows close to 30, and I got a VRAM warning about three quarters of the way through. Unlike Horizon, Forza Motorsport doesn't have any good news for the 1650 Super. The built-in benchmark barely registers a difference between 1080p medium and low, even when restarting the game in between tests. Both scored about 31 FPS on average and 25 at minimum. Actual in-game performance depends on how many other cars are on screen, so if you're doing well you might see FPS in the 40s, but otherwise things get pretty darn cinematic. Well, this rocked my world. I've tested a bunch of 4GB cards in Halo Infinite, and the only other card I've seen pull this shit was the RX 6500 XT. I restarted the game a couple of times, tried medium and high presets, and even when higher quality assets load up at the start, they soon revert to these ridiculous low quality versions within a couple of minutes. The low preset almost works, and the near 80 FPS average is wonderful and all, but again, within 10 minutes or so it's back to abstract trees and landscape straight out of 1997. If you're into Halo and need a cheap GPU, I think a 1660 series is going to be a better option. The 1650 Super puts in a decent showing in a Playtale Requiem. As I've said many times before, I don't see a problem with sacrificing performance for image quality in this game, and at 1080 medium with the ultra quality upscaling option it's possible to almost see a 30fps minimum. There is still plenty of room to drop the upscaling further if you disagree. I've been testing Cyberpunk for so long that I actually have results from the last 1650 Super I reviewed back in April of 2021. I was still new to this whole thing back then and I hadn't settled on a fixed test run, but the card seems to perform about 9-10% worse on average nowadays, averaging 43 FPS. That could of course be down to CDPR changing the settings in the quality presets, which is something they've done at least once in the last 30 odd months. Spider-Man Remastered is a pretty good result for the 1650 Super, recording a mostly 60 plus experience at 1080 high, only really dropping when looking out from the top of skyscrapers. This result is 10% higher than the 1066GB and a few points above the 588GB. Somewhat predictably, the 1650 Super proves more than up to the challenge of running Fortnite, at least at more competitive settings. At low, with epic view distance, we're looking at a 146fps average, and at the medium preset with epic view distance that drops to about 100, within 10% of both the other two similar performing cards, while still looking pretty great. As for high, well, Lumina Nanite are very pretty, 
but as a 30 fps average that drops to the 20s in jungle areas, this isn't the card to enjoy them with. Call of Duty Warzone gives a pretty interesting result. The 1060 absolutely fell apart in this title, only reaching 50 FPS at 1080 Basic, and the 1650 Super blitzes it by a 50% margin. It's still about 10 frames short of the RX 580, however, and only about 4 frames better than the non-Super 1650. Finally, out of curiosity, I decided to have a quick test in Control, a game from the year the 1650 Super was launched, and the spiritual ancestor to the ultra-demanding Alan Wake 2, a game which I haven't decided whether or not I'm buying yet. The good news was that at 1080p, both medium and high, the Super's 4GB memory limit wasn't a problem. At high, however, its performance was. Averages were in the 40s, which might be playable with a controller, but with mouse and keyboard it was a pain in the ass. At medium, things are a lot better, averaging over 60 most of the time. Being fair to the 1650 Super, 4 gigabyte cards are perhaps not quite as dead as I might have thought. I should qualify that statement though, adding more VRAM to a 1650 Super, were that possible, wouldn't improve its performance in many games, because the GPU itself can't really achieve great FPS in those games anyway. It would allow some games to run at higher settings however, RE4 Remake for example would have more room to turn up settings without risking a crash. Halo Infinite wouldn't have its dumb LOD issues, and Forza Horizon 5 will be able to safely turn up to Ultra without worrying about running out of memory. Alas, this is all academic, there is no 6 or 8GB 1650 Super, and with any luck there never will be. I'm certainly not asking for one. Nvidia, your next $150 graphics card damn well better be an improvement on this. Turing's 5 years old at this point and you remember how everyone reacted to the GTX 1630. To anyone thinking of buying a 1650 Super in 2023, I guess I'm not saying no. It's mostly better performing than the GTX 1060 and RX 580, and if you get one for a similar price and don't have ambitions of playing modern AAA games, you could certainly do worse. If you want better for similar money, I'm inclined to suggest going for the GTX 1070 instead. It has double the VRAM and performs better in most games. It does consume a little more power though, and it's a good few years older if that's a problem for you. I have a couple more videos in mind for the 1650 Super, as it happens to be a perfect fit for a workstation I picked up a while back, and I also want to see how it compares against one of the cheapest cards you can buy brand new. Keep an eye out for those videos in the next few weeks. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.